It was just when the world got even more weird. Something was going down on an island called Pokyo. At first, Pokyo seemed like a normal island. Just a place full of woods and cities. Just a place of peace. That was until a strange being that lived on Pokyo. This strange being lived in the biggest city on the island called Pokhal. Just what was it that made this being so strange? What made him look different compared to everyone else in Pokhal? Though this strange being looked a bit like a normal human teenage boy, he had two things that made him stood out. He had cat ears. Some say he could have been a Neku, and this boy with cat ears was known as Rabe. Where did Rabe come from before those life-changing events? What were his true origins? No one knew at the time. Not even Rabe himself. When Rabe was nine years old, he was found by a human girl who was around the exact same age as he was. Her name was Mia, and she took him in to meet her parents. After her parents got a good first impression from Rabe that they decided to raise him, Rabe grew to love the family he had. He loved both Mia and her parents. He was even homeschooled a bit because Mia's parents thought he wasn't ready for public school at the moment. After being homeschooled for seven years, Mia's parents felt that the young Neko was ready for more things in life. They felt he needed to coexist in society with other people in the world, and what better way to do it than to have the young Neko start in high school. It was at that moment Rabe had become a junior in high school, and he would go there with Mia. This was the story of a girl and her pet Neko boy. It was the first day of high school for every student, whether it was freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. Some were bummed out to begin the school year, and some were excited. Even Rabe was excited, but Mia wasn't, and that was because she had to keep a close eye on him so he wouldn't get into any trouble. Mia had one best friend who had approached her in the halls of the school. Her name was Cynthia Sushi Perry. Cynthia had read Mia's body language and knew she was feeling nervous at the moment. Cynthia asked, What's wrong, Mia? Mia then said, It's Rabe. He's out wandering the halls by himself. Cynthia then said, So... Mia then said, So I'm worried for him. Maybe he can walk the halls by himself, but I'm worried all hell is going to break loose with him. Mia kept thinking of herself as the guardian of Rabe. Mia then said, What if he gets into trouble? Cynthia smiled and answered back, If he gets into trouble, he gets into trouble. With a smile still on Cynthia's face, she then said back, It's not supposed to help. It's supposed to be funny for me. Before Mia could say anything else to Cynthia, they had both heard a loud rumbling noise. They looked around and saw a familiar face. He was another fellow student, and he was also the hall monitor. He was tall, and some ladies thought he was good looking, though he did not believe that he was handsome himself. His name was Aaron Blade, but some people called him by his nickname, Blade Ninja. Mia and Cynthia then looked down at Aaron's legs. Rabe was right below Aaron as he was rubbing his head against his legs. The rubbing on Aaron's legs had made Rabe feel so affectionate that he was purring at the same time, which was the rumbling noise that Mia and Cynthia had heard. As Aaron was not too happy about it, he said to Mia, Is he yours? Mia said, He is. Sorry, Aaron. Rabe then got up and said to Aaron, I'm done rubbing on your legs. Meow. The Neko felt so proud that Aaron should appreciate for what he had just did to his legs. Mia was still worried and said, I'm really sorry, Aaron. It won't happen again. Cynthia then said to Aaron, Don't believe her. It may happen again. Aaron then said, I'll let it go this time. Mostly because I know you're trying to protect him. He just needs to be kept out of trouble. That's all. Mia and Cynthia took Rob A with them as they were on their way to class. It was still morning in the high school of Pokal. Mia, Rabe, and Cynthia were in math class together, sitting near each other. As the teacher was writing on the chalkboard, Mia looked at Rabe. She saw that the Neko's face was cringing, and that he was about ready to moan. Mia whispered to him, Don't moan. Rabe then said back, I have to go. Meow. Mia came to realization on Rabe's intentions. She said, Do you have to use the bathroom? Rabe then shouted, Meow! Everybody in the classroom got to hear him. Even the teacher did as well. Mia had felt extremely embarrassed as Cynthia was smiling more and was cheering silently in her seat. Mia then said to the teacher, I have to use the bathroom. So does Robbie. That's what he's trying to say. Mia wasn't lying that she had to go to the bathroom too. 
but Rob A had to go even more, and she thought going with him at the same time would work out way better in that situation. The teacher then gave Rob A and Mia permission to use the bathrooms. As they walked down a couple hallways, they managed to find two bathrooms, one for the boys and one for the girls. Mia went to the girls' bathroom as she believed Rob A had went into the boys' bathroom. After she had finished in the bathroom, Mia had walked out. She moved her head around a bit to see if Rob A was still around. She told him if he were to get done early in the bathroom, he needed to wait outside. So she assumed that he was still in the men's bathroom. Mia had waited a bit for Rob A to come out for about a minute, but all of a sudden Rob A was wandering the halls instead of coming from the bathroom. In Rob A's hands was a bag of sand that he took from the workout room. Mia then got curious and said, Rob A, what are you doing with that? Rob A then said, It's a bag of litter. He then went to the bathroom as Mia began to think what he was going to do with that bag of sand. After thinking hard about it for a few seconds, Mia began to panic and shouted. Rob A? Mia entered the boys' bathroom to stop Rob A, but when she came in, it was too late. Rob A had already cut the bag of sand open and spilled it on the floor of the stall. Rob A? Rob A, I'm really going to do it. That sand, not litter. Rob A felt he was intimidated by Mia's lecture. He said, I don't want to use the toilets. Rob A had then unzipped his pants. Mia then said, Please don't. Don't do it. The Neko had ignored Mia. Rob A began to urinate on the sand. He was treating the sand like it was a letterbox. Mia had looked away in shame, though she was lucky no one else was around to see it. That was until Aaron came in and saw what had occurred in the bathroom stall. With Aaron as a witness, Mia panicked and said, Sorry, Aaron. After Rob A was done urinating on the sand, he said to Aaron, I just had to do my business. Meow. Aaron then said a bit calmly, It's okay. I'll let it go this time. Mia and Rob A felt that they had already heard those exact words before from Aaron. But either way, Mia was grateful and said, Thank you, Aaron. Rob A and Mia had then exited the bathroom leaving Aaron to look at the wet sand in disappointment. Aaron then said to himself, <sighs> Guess I'm cleaning this up, but I'm still letting it go. After a few classes together, it was lunchtime for many students, including Rob A, Mia, and Cynthia. All three of them had packed their meals in lunch boxes, and they got to sit together. Mia opened her lunch and had a ham sandwich, and Cynthia had a turkey sandwich. Both of them had looked forward to their meals, with hunger occurring in their stomachs. Mia said, Finally, all of the crazy stuff that we had done has made me hungry. Rob A then said, It's made me hungry too. Cynthia then said with curiosity to Rob A, Well, what do you have for lunch? The Neku had opened his lunchbox, and like both Cynthia and Mia, he had a sandwich. Mia then said, That's a weird looking sandwich, Rob A. Not only did the sandwich look weird, but it smelled weird. Mia and Cynthia got to smell the sandwich as well. The Neko said proudly, It's my lunch. It has canned cat food in it. Mia felt she was ready to be sick. The smell of cat food sandwich had made her lose her appetite. Though Cynthia was the only one not bothered by the smell. Instead, she had giggled a bit at Mia and Rabe. Cynthia then said, This is why I love hanging out with you guys. Cynthia was not bothered by the smell of cat food, she just loved the enjoyment of watching Mia ready to hurl. It was at that right time Aaron had showed up with his lunch, and like both Cynthia and Mia, he had smelled the cat food sandwich too. He watched as Rob A took a couple bites from his sandwich. It was like Aaron was watching it in slow motion. Aaron was a bit grossed out too. He then said, I see we have a problem here. Mia then said, No shit. Aaron then said, It's okay. I'll let it go this time. Mia then came up to Aaron and was ready to burst into anger. She said, Of course you will, but do you want to know what I would do? If I were the hall monitor and I saw this, I would be pissed. So why don't you feel pissed off about this? The anger she had gotten, the louder her voice had gotten. Aaron had gotten even more uncomfortable. Rabe had stopped eating and Cynthia had cheered for Mia. Aaron then said, I guess. 
I'm not going to let this go. He then went up to Robbie and said in a stern tone, Robbie, this is not okay. This is your first warning and only warning. If I have to see anything like this again, I will take you to the principal's office. Do I make myself clear? Robbie didn't seem to feel intimidated, but he understood that the whole matter was serious. So he said, I understand. Meow. Aaron then said, Thank you for your time, Robbie. After they had finished eating lunch, Aaron had left the cafeteria, leaving it just Rabe, Mia, and Cynthia. Mia then said to Rabe, From now on, you're going to eat tuna, okay? Rabe then said, Okay, that sounds good. Just don't have that hall monitor talk to me like that again. I'm not rubbing on his legs again. He comes near me again, I'll hiss at him. That bastard. Aaron then came back rushing and said, I think I left my pencil here. Did you guys see me leave it here? With Aaron and Rabe's presence, the Neko student had hissed at him. <sighs> making Aaron feel a bit jumpy and surprised. And so that was the first day for Rabe. It felt like the beginning of his adventure.